Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64. We're coming up on everything that we've been watching here lately. Hoping and praying for that blessed hope that we will be raptured out of here and go home. <clears throat> My voice is a little hoarse, sorry about that. It's something we've been looking forward to for a very long time. Uh, on a planet of 8 billion people, if you look around, walk through grocery stores, I do it all the time when I'm out with my wife or with friends, I talk about it, and no one ever, like rarely ever comes up and says to me, what is that you're talking about? I, I want to learn more about that. They think we're crazy and, and that uh, this event's not going to happen. They are not focused on those types of things are focused on the world and the Bible told us that's what would happen. There will be very few that will actually be looking forward to this event and care nothing about what's going on here in this uh, in this world uh, planning for future things. Pretty much everything I do and, and, and honestly since I was young um, and I found out about this was I made decisions, lifelong decisions, because I thought the rapture was going to happen a long time ago. And it's been awesome. It's been an awesome ride. And I'm hoping that this is my last video. I'm hoping that uh, the next time I see you, uh, we'll see you in heaven. And uh, it'll be it'll be quite the day when we finally get there. So. Um, until we go, uh, if anything new pops up, I will bring it to you. From my last video, I think it's been nine or ten days ago, I attempted to upload a video three days ago, and I did it several times. It wouldn't work. I even made a uh, quick video to tell you that I was trying to, but none of it ever worked, so I pulled it all down. These are actually the first videos I've ever deleted since I started. The video would upload, but the volume wouldn't. But when I watched the video on my phone, I could hear the volume, which was confusing. So we're going to attempt to make this video. And again, I hope it's the last one. I hope this is it. Um, is it the Festival of Wine, the 9th of Av? I don't know. It, it, it's a very, a lot of them, though. Every time we come up to a date, it was a very promising date, and we just kept going forward and kept searching and honestly um every date we find we learn new stuff like this find that dr barry had about the the festival of wine and now everybody's talking about it and uh the holy spirit is revealing things to us now and honestly i can't see us being past here uh, after september the 11th which is the first day of creation that to me is the biggest cutoff that I have. And the reason September the 11th is the biggest cutoff is because after that, on September the 15th, we have the Feast of Trumpets, which is Rosh Hashanah. Then we have Yom Kippur on Tishri 10. Then we have Tabernacles on Tishri 15. I'm going to show you all that. So I can't see us going past September the 11th. Um, some think we have to go during a... Uh, feast day and there are seven feast days I personally think that it could happen at any moment between now and any feast day or, or shortly thereafter and why is that it's because eight is God's perfect number it is the beginning from the end it's it's uh, it is God's like perfectly aligned number so I think that there will be an event, the rapture of the bride, the rapture of the church, that will occur on its own day. And that day, which is not celebrated now, will be celebrated in heaven. And then there will be eight feasts when we get to heaven. All these other feasts are pointed more towards the Jews. Uh, and remember, God loves the Jews. Those are his chosen people. You can never get past that. The only reason that uh, we're here, which God already knew, it's no surprise to him, is that they would, he chose that people because they would be stiff-necked. They would be hard-headed. And at the end, they will bow down, finally, 
Can you imagine the patience of God? Finally, they will bow down and recognize who they killed 2,000 years ago. We did too. Now, we sinned, so we can't specifically blame the Jews because if Jesus hadn't done what he did, we wouldn't have a place. We are the Gentile bride. We are about to go home. And again, I hope this is my last video, and I hope this is it, and we're gone. I hope that uh, what we're seeing is actually going down. Everything is set up. The world scene, everything is set up. We're seeing this thing where you put your palm down and you can buy stuff. Um, no longer will cash be king, uh, as we as we say. It's going to be all digital. And the day you make them upset and they don't like you, uh, they will just shut your money off. It's that simple. You will do what they say because they will be in complete control. It's not like you have a pocket full of money or money hidden under your floorboard in your house or in a safety deposit box somewhere. Those days are gone. Cash will become illegal and it'll all be digital and they will control you 100% of the time. So we see it. It's all set up. We see that Israel is surrounded right now. So we pray for them because these are God's people and it's scary to be surrounded. Like we don't understand that here. Nobody surrounds America as of yet, but that day is coming. But they've surrounded Israel. We see what's going on over in Russia and Ukraine. We see this digital currency coming. We see this AI that's growing. We see all of these things that they're putting right in front of us to more or less numb us to what's about to go down. And we can see it. They can't, but they will. So let me get into the pictures here real quick. All right, the timeline, where are we at right now? Now, remember, for me, the head of the year is always back here on March 17th. The day of equal parts where Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in a day, happens every single year. It has since creation. You can go into time and date and see it will happen in the year 2600. It's always happened. No matter what happens, it is March the 16th. The next day, March the 17th, is the first day of the year, St. Patrick's Day. Fourteen days after the head of the year, Jesus is on the cross. Nisan 14. And we go over here. The head of the year, before God changed it in Exodus 12, Feast of Trumpets, that was Noah's new year, was Rosh Hashanah. But he changed it in Exodus 12. What happened 14 days after Rosh Hashanah? Jesus was born. He was born on the Feast of Tabernacles. This can be the only date that Jesus was born. You can argue the Gregorian calendar against the Hebrew calendar all day long, but there is a fact that 14 days after the new head of the year, Jesus went to the cross. 14 days after the old head of the year, Jesus was born. There are several events in Jesus' life that we must adhere to. A lot of people, well, the, the, the sheep shearing seasons in spring, that's fine. But Jesus was born in September. Uh, in my opinion, on September the 29th, on Tishri 15, Feast of Tabernacles. Now this year, and I've been going up against their calendar for the last three years, and we're always off by 10 days, 8 days, 15 days. It jumps around. It, it just keeps jumping up and down, jumping around. But this particular year is different than all the other years that I've been doing this. Over the last three years, four years, when I discovered this timeline. And that is that their Google, I guess Google or the Hebrew timeline, Hebrew calendar, actually matches mine in this point here, which tells me it's very important because it won't do this again next year. I'm going to say this, and, 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 and uh, some people who look at other calendars, I just, I, I just want to use some common sense. Sun goes up, sun goes down, that's a day. The sun goes up, the sun goes down, that's a day. You have to assign a number to that day. You have to. In this instance, 
even if you wanted to assign January 1st, which is exactly 75 days too soon, and call it Nissan 1, whatever you want to call it. The sun goes up, the sun goes down. How is it in the beginning of the year, I'm six days off from their timeline, but here towards the middle of the year, just after the middle of the year, we're exactly even. Where did those six days go? Because the sun went up and the sun, sun came down. The planet currently is beginning to spin a little bit faster, which means our day is going to get a little bit shorter. And I've seen some good teachings on the fact that if the Earth spins even faster, the day could be cut short by one third and the night by one third. Is it still a day? Yes. I don't care if the planet sun comes up and goes down and comes back up and it takes it's 16 hours instead of 24 hours and it's cut short by one third. It doesn't matter. It's still a day. Are we traveling around the sun any faster? No, we're still going around the sun at the same speed. So we're going to see the constellations correctly. Just the earth will be spinning faster. Now for the flat earthers, I don't want to get into an argument about that. I just can't see it. I guess in heaven we'll find out. It is not a salvational issue and it is not an argumentative point. It is simply what I believe to be true, but again, not salvational. But if the earth begins to spin faster, what happens to the water on our planet? We've heard for the last oh, 40 years that this our, our cars, cow farts, I mean, seriously, people, are causing the planet to heat up. That is not what's causing the planet to heat up. It is a cycle the planet goes through. But it is. It is heating up. So with that in mind, and the ice caps are melting, explain to me why the Mississippi River is going dry. Why is the Euphrates going dry? It has nothing to do with the amount of water on this planet. It has to do with how fast it's spinning. The gravitational pull is pulling water away from some places and putting it in others. You go to other places where there's never been any water, and suddenly they have water. I think I saw something out in the desert that was uh, a new river being formed over there. So it's all, the faster the Earth spins, the more it displaces water, the more where we knew water to be will no longer be, and the more where no water was, water will become. So... The argument that the Earth will spin faster is a good argument. It still won't change the the, uh, the seasons. It still won't change them because the Earth will, even if it spins faster, will always be facing uh, its equator. It, the, the North Pole will always be facing Ursa Minor. From the north side of this planet, you can see Ursa Minor. You cannot see Ursa Minor from the south side of this planet. The planet were flat from the south side of this planet or if it were flat, we would all see Ursa Minor, but we cannot. From the south end in Australia, they see the Southern Cross. We cannot on the northern end. If the planet is flat, we should all see the Southern Cross. But I don't want to get into, I know I'm going to get into the argument, but I don't want to get into it because it's irrelevant. My point was that once we start ignoring the biblical verses about the days being shortened, um, there is no good argument to that if the sun is hanging on a string and just spinning around. I'm not quite sure how it would stay up there and how gravity works and all that. But uh, a good explanation of that, if the, flat, the earth is flat, would be, would be interesting as to how the sun would move faster. Also, the planets, and I took a picture of that, the planets... Did you know, relative to their size, it's irre their size, it's irrelevant to how fast they spin. We have some of the largest planets that spin faster than the Earth, and we have some of the smallest planets that spin slower than the Earth. So this spin has nothing to do with it. Um, when you spin a top, and if you were in a vacuum, there would be nothing stopping, nothing, you know, like the top would stay together, it wouldn't disintegrate or fall apart. So let me get into this. I don't want to get too much into that. Where are we at now? So 15 days after the head of the new year previously, Jesus was born. He was conceived on December the 25th, right here. The 24th at nightfall. And his egg, which is very important, that it traveled down the tube. If anybody's ever had a child, I've had six. So it's very important. It's very um, 
the first week is, and, and that's the thing, you don't really know about it until it's happened, but there are, are issues that come up where the baby's trapped in the tube and there's nothing they can do at that point. They have to save the mother, right? Or there might be surgery, they can bring the baby down into the uterus, but I don't know. But it's a very important moment. And the first thing Mary does when she finds out she's pregnant from the Holy Spirit is get on a donkey and ride it to see her cousin, Elizabeth, where John, who she, at this point, when she reaches him, is six months and one week pregnant, John leaps in the womb. John, from that date, is born at the same day Jesus goes to the cross. John, remember, was beheaded before Jesus went to the cross. But John would have been born on Nisan 14. You see how it all ties in. Over here, Jesus was born on Tabernacles, Sukkot. Eight days later, at the end of this eight-day feast, he was circumcised and named. A baby is born. They are not named until eight days later. Remember, the father's mouth... Now, uh, of uh, who was it? Was it Isaiah? I don't recall who it was, but they uh, it was an older gentleman, older woman. Um, they were in their 90s, I believe, and uh, they had, or 70s, I don't recall, and they had a baby in there. His, he was made mute until he named the baby. He named the baby on the eighth day. That's when he could speak yet. And so Jesus was named at, at the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. Remember, there's a seven-day feast, and then an eighth great day, that's the day Jesus was named. There is no other scenario, and I have placed these four events everywhere on this timeline to see if anything else matches. Someone brought to my attention that Hanukkah is, in fact, an eight-day feast, and they're correct. But when I put it there... Jesus being born or conceived or anything else, it doesn't. It will not match up anywhere else. It, do, it would match up here where if he were born on Hanukkah and then eight days later he was circumcised uh, when Hanukkah ends, uh, that might match. But it, it, when you go uh, 40 weeks earlier, it doesn't land on anything important. But Jesus said he comes to tabernacle with us, and that's the perfect time when he was born. All right, so let's go back here. Where are we at now? We are now uh, coming up on, on the Enoch timeline, July 24th is the 9th of Av. You go down over here, right here, you see Nissan has 30 days. If Nissan had 29 days or IR had 29 days, this numbers would not work. In order to reach the 9th of Av to being... Um, to being the uh, and not uh, to, to to being on 7:24 instead of 7:26 uh, each month, Nissan and Ayar would have to have 31 days, but they do not. They have 30 days, so Nissan has 30, 30, 31, and 30. So that's 121 days, and then of course Av have nine days, has nine days, so that's 130 days in from the head of the year. The ninth of Av, 130 days. July 24th is the 205th day of our Gregorian calendar. It is 75 days off. 75 days added to the 130 is 205, and it's the 205th day of the year. Tisha B'Av, Pentecost. This is the date the raven and dove were released. And the raven kept going, flying to and fro. Now, and I love this rapture scenario because the raven and the dove are released. Eventually, the dove does come back with nothing. It's like we go to heaven with nothing. We show up with nothing. Only Jesus, just like Elisha tore off the world and Elisha went up with nothing. Elisha gave up the cloak. He, everything, we show up in heaven with nothing. But the raven flies to and fro and never comes back. Is that the point where Satan is kicked out of heaven and we're taken into heaven? Also, it is 153 days to Jesus' conception. When did Jesus leave heaven to come here to earth? It was not on his birthday. The Hebrews or the Jews count from conception day as when somebody has began life. Jesus, when he left heaven, came here on December the 25th, 
that's when it began. It did not begin on tabernacles. That's when he was born. So 153 days later, when Jesus came here, exactly from July 24th, lands on December, I think it's 24th, 25th. So this is the picture I used last time. I'll use it again. This is the video I tried to upload. I'll tell you what, the first upload took 21 hours. And then when I went to watch it the next day, no volume. And then the next one took about eight hours. And when I went to watch it, no volume. And then the third one I started and then I said, you know what? I'm not going to do it. So I wanted to show you this again right here. First Thessalonians 4 is a rapture. Caught up means rapture up together. Caught up means rapture. And the original language, it's called harpazo. This moment here is the rapture of the bride. There is a different word used in, let's see here, Second Thessalonians, gather together. Gathering is not a rapture. There's a lot of stuff going on here that you'd be not soon shaking in mind. There's going to be attacks on you after the rapture. Uh, the saints that go into the tribulation, they need a little bit more cleaning, a little bit more work from, from God himself, and then they will be taken. It is a great multitude that no man can count in seal six. Here they have turmoil going on. And this is a gathering. It is a different word. I had several people look it up. This word gathering is not this word caught up together. This is the rapture. These are the saints. They're going to go through it. They're going to or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Their day is coming. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkle of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Rapture verses. Again, these two will be taken to heaven. They are going to heaven. They are going to paradise, just like the thief on the cross went to paradise. The thief on the cross was not a bride. He was a saint. He was going through tribulation. The bride was Barabbas. Barabbas, not one recorded word from the mouth of Barabbas. While he stood up there with Jesus, Barabbas is a picture of the bride. We are wholly guilty, completely guilty, yet Jesus took our place on that cross. And the thief on the cross took his place on the cross, went into tribulation, and Jesus still saved him. He had to wash his robe white. His robe was washed white. He got palm branches. The bride gets a brilliant white robe. It's a different, uh, slightly different, but all of us wind up in heaven. And how long after the rapture do they wind up in heaven? I still lean towards six days uh, because that ark door stayed open for seven days. Because when J Jacob got Leah, Laban, her father said, give her her seven days, and then he got Rachel, but yet he continued to work for seven years. It's a perfect example of Leah being the bride, Rachel being the saint or, or the wife, and then he still has to complete those seven years. There's too many examples of those seven years to say that the tribulation is cut short. That what's cut short is not those seven years. What's cut short is the time people will spend in those seven years. Revelation 4, the four and twenty elders fell down before him that sat on the throne and worshipped, worshipped him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, you see how they cast their crowns? Uh, their crowns? <clears throat> Sorry, I'm having a hard time speaking today. You see how they cast their crowns before the throne? That's us. We cast our crowns before the throne. Millions of crowns. Not 24 crowns, millions of crowns are cast at the feet of Jesus for the wonderful thing he did for us when he didn't have to. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things. For thy pleasure they are and were created. Jesus is the creator. Give them a shout out. 
I didn't know this. Uh, I've seen this channel several times, but I just thought Bob Barber um, at End Time Dreams and Vision just had a second channel. I had no idea that uh, this, these, this is their own channel. They just invite him on quite often. Uh, go watch. You can see there the second video down. Dr. Barry had a wonderful testimony. It was fantastic, and it really, really touches the pulse of what is happening and why there's going to be so many people um, left behind, but that will re recognize what just happened because all of us are running around going, if you see me go, when it happens, these people are going to be like, wait a minute, they were right, and they're going to have the proper tools that they need, the right armament that they need to defend against the lie that's coming. So it's very important that we tell as many people as we can that what this event is about to take place, everybody in my house knows that the moment, maybe we all go, maybe some of us go, maybe, you know, I don't know, other family doesn't go that's in other houses, but when we disappear, they're going to be like, this is exactly what he said on television. They're going to be going, oh, look, uh, it's an alien invasion. And the EMP just struck. All power is going to go out everywhere. Nobody's going to be able to talk for a few days until they bring the power back online. You know, oh, look, a uh, nuclear bomb caused all this. Uh, they're going to think of everything possible, and you won't have anybody to call to complain to at all. You won't have the Internet to get on to try to figure out what just happened. You're going to be all alone. There, there's going to be nobody to tell you what just happened. The only thing you're going to have to fall back on is if, pray to God, there was a Christian somewhere in your life at some point that said, if you see me go, then they will know what just happened. It will not be a surprise. They will know and understand what just happened. And then when finally the power comes back on, they're going to see all the lies and they're going to be like, they'll have that armament. They'll have that suit of armor. They'll know what just happened. And they're not going to buy into that mess that they're coming up with. But yeah, go watch Dr. Barry's video. It's very good here on Uptime Community Church. Uh, subscribe to them. It is a very good channel. I, again, I, th I thought Bob Barber had it. I did not know until I was scrolling through and I saw it and I'm like, wait a minute. Huh. Will did a very good, this is Worship and Watch. Will over at Worship and Watch did a very good video yesterday. He was explaining, I think it was Elijah, 50 prophets and, and 50 of those prophet servants came up or something and Elijah struck them down and then another 50 and then and 50. So that would be like 100, 100. And on the, on the last set of 50s, um, but he does a very good explanation of this. Please go watch his video and subscribe to him. All right, you can go online anytime. I, I want to go back into this. I'm not trying to convince anybody that this is the timeline. I'm just trying to, to say, hey, look, it's a possibility that uh, the Festival of Wine is two days earlier than we thought. It might be on 724. God might be using their calendar, and it will be on 726. 726 means Harpazo, so, but so does 724 and 725. So this is a, they're all uh, they're all related uh, numbers in the uh, in the way they count in the Bible. So 724, 725, and 726 are all related numbers. But you can go online; anybody can do this, and you can find this. Notice here where I say March 17th is the head of the year. See that line? Whoops. March 17th is right there. In the middle of March is Nisan 1. Nisan, of course, is the first month, right there where the four Sabbath arrow is pointing. It's pointing right at the beginning of Nisan for Nisan 1 in the middle of March. I found this long before I understood this calendar. As a matter of fact, I found this and thought they were dialed out by a whole month, that they were wrong by a whole month, until I found in time and date, the day of equal parts, the day that Jesus said, that are, not, are there not 12 hours in the day and 12 hours at night, referencing the day Jesus, uh, Lazarus died. And then, honestly, from there, two, has it been two or three years from there, I've started getting all these dates and counting from March 17th, and they all fit. 
every I've discovered when Jesus was born and when he was conceived. I didn't do that because I wanted it to happen. I did that because it all fell perfectly into place. There is no mistake exactly into place. So I did another search. Here's another one. You can go on there right now onto, onto uh, Google and search the Hebrew uh, Gregorian calendar. And this is what you'll find. You'll find 20 or 30 different explanations just like this. You see right there, January begins two and a half months before Nisan. You got Adar, Shabbat, and halfway through Tibet, you have where January begins. And on the timeline, January begins, let me see here, on the new year on Tibet, 17. And you can see that the middle, the beginning of January points right at Tibet, right in the middle of Tibet, and that's Tibet 17. So you go forward here, and the head of the year will be at um, uh, right there at the beginning of Nisan, pointing right in the middle of March. But the end of March, March 30th, it's right in the middle of Nisan, which is Nisan 14, the day Jesus goes to the cross. So I wanted you, and I put it upside down just so you can see where we are right now. We are in the month of Av, right now. We are on July 23rd, at the very end of July. The middle of July, uh, sorry, the end of July is the first of Av, and the first of Av falls on July 16th, perfectly, right in the center, just like it shows. But then, July 24th, the 9th of Av, you go nine days in, and you're July 24th instead of July 16th. So the timeline matches perfectly what we're seeing on Google. I wanted to show you this. You can take a semi-powerful telescope and look at all of our planets. Every single planet is spinning. Jupiter is a massive planet, and it only takes 10 hours for it to spin around one time. I can go outside right now and... Uh, look at which one is it? It's, uh, think Venus and, and watch it spin. It's slow because Venus is the slowest turning planet in our solar system. It takes 243 days for it to make one spin. Mercury, it takes 58 days. It's a small planet. Why does it take longer for Mercury to spin around one time than it does Earth, which is 24 hours, 23.56 hours for Earth to spin around one time? Mars spins around at 24 and a half hours. Mars is smaller than Earth. Venus is relatively the same size as Earth. So the speed of the planet spinning does not rip the planet apart in any kind of way. I believe that Earth will begin spinning as fast as Neptune or Uranus here shortly. Two very large, massive planets only take 16 and 17 hours to spin around Saturn, absolutely massive, 10 and a half hours to spin around. Jupiter, 10 hours to spin around. So the size of the planet is irrelevant to how fast it'll spin. You get a strong enough telescope, you can look up there and you can watch because it only takes 10 hours. Uh, you can literally watch Jupiter spin. Uh, if you have the right filter, you can watch the sun spin. You can watch everything spin. The one planet we can't watch spin is Earth. We can't see ourselves spin, but we can look up at the constellations and see us spinning. This is another new channel right here called Gospel of Grace. I really liked his teaching, and he lays it out perfectly. We have the church age, then we have the rapture, then we have tribulation, and we have what he doesn't have on here is the gathering uh, after the tribulation. Then we have the second coming, where Jesus comes back with his bride to make war against uh, Satan, we have Armageddon, then we have the Millennial Kingdom, and then we have the Great White Throne Judgment. That happens at the end. God has, and, and, and this is why I say pray for Israel, because it's all over, finally, at the end, when Israel will bend their knee and recognize that Jesus was God, and they crucified him. Um, 
and they will cry. It says in the Bible, they will cry when they realize what they had done. And God, of course, is gracious and forgiving, and he is going to forgive them so much so. They are going to go in the millennium and live out in the millennium. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, and verily I say unto you, ye shall not see me until the time come when ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. So there will come a moment, and that's when they will see him, where they will kneel down and say, Jesus Christ is in fact God. Okay, so. All right. Let's hope this uploads. I showed you. I had more stuff in the last video. It was an hour and 15 minutes. I thought it was brilliant, and my voice wasn't so broken up. So um, I hope this is the last video. I hope this is it. Uh, high watch moments are literally right now, right now, and through the 26th, and then, of course, the 30th uh, for me, and I think for them it's probably August the 1st or 2nd. I'm not sure as to when to be obvious for them. But for me, it's July 30th, uh, one week later. And so we're just watching and watching. I just, my mind's going to be blown if we go past September the 11th, the day God began creating everything. Because he said 6,000 years. Well, September 11th is 6,000 years. Exactly, 6,000 years. So, um, and that's from creation. Seven years later is when Adam sinned. And in the eighth year, in the second month, in the 17th day, Adam sinned, and then he was kicked out of the garden in the fourth month. So he was in the garden, actually, for about a month and a half until God kicked him out and set up cherubims at the entrance so they couldn't come in. So just keep watching, and if you find anything, uh, bring it in. I'll put a link to the Discord. There's a lot of good information in there. Um, if you find anything helpful towards these ends as to when we're going and if it should happen, and you're one of those who gets on there and say, we don't know the day or the hour. We've proven that over and over again in the Word of God. Whether you you know acknowledge it or refuse to believe it, that's up to you. But in the end, um, in the end, they're going to realize that the rapture was real, and they're still here. And they wish that they hadn't really turned this into a joke. But it doesn't affect me, the comments. I don't really get bothered. They don't affect me. They don't bother me. I don't care because I know when you make those comments, what group you're in. And, and I pray for you. I actually pray for more for you. So um, if you make those comments, you get a prayer. <laughs> so I'm not trying to encourage you to want to make those comments because what I don't want you to do is to take somebody who's on the fence about the concept of a rapture and convince them that it's silly and that uh, when it happens, uh, their blood will be on your hands for uh, promoting that concept. And I don't want that for anybody, honestly. So the rapture is about to occur. I pray this is my last video and I will look for you when we get to heaven. I think even though you've seen me and I haven't seen you, I will recognize you perhaps by your name um, when we get there. I think we're going to be a lot smarter when we get there. We're going to be built up big and strong, no more pain, no more anything. It's going to be amazing. So I look forward to seeing each and every single one of you uh, when we get there. And uh, then all we can do is wait for the <clears throat> the rest of the family to show up, the saints, and they will, because they'll realize that this was all real and true. So uh, Repo Man 64 like, comment, share, and subscribe. Most importantly, honestly, is not going in this rapture, believe it or not. It's not the most important. The most important is that you don't go to the lake of fire. You could go into this rapture. You could go gathered to heaven, like the thief on the cross, as a saint. You could go into the millennium and live out a thousand years to be tempted again. But the one place that you didn't go, and which is what the white throne judgment is at the very end, is where everyone who still refuses to believe, and there's going to be many. I don't know why at that point, but there will be many uh, that will go into the lake of fire. And that is what the concern is. That is what you're being saved from. You are not being saved from the tribulation. 
that's a state of mind. That's that's uh, that's you know what you've been revealed to see in the Bible. What you're being saved from is this lake of fire, which you can't see, but it's at the bottom, and it's written backwards for you. So go to a quiet place. I'm serious about this. Just you and your father. Confess to him that you don't know anything, that you don't want to go to hell, and that there's nothing you can do to save yourself, and you need him, and he will not turn that away. He will not turn it away. And do that. And then go tell the world so that somebody else can be saved and you will have helped somebody else. All right, RepoMan64, we'll chat with you again later.